Our next guest was declared clinically dead for 24 minutes, and she's here to tell us all about her miraculous road to recovery. Please welcome to the show, Lauren Canaday. Lauren, we have some amazing stories today. Yours is equally amazing. You died after a sudden cardiac arrest. In the weeks leading up to that day, did you have any warning signs? Yes and no. I was, um, I tested positive for COVID in December of 2022, so two months before the cardiac arrest, and I had a grand mal seizure one week before. Um, in between, I had a lot of dizziness, so something was up, but um, my doctors didn't think to check my heart. Um, I didn't have a history of any heart problems, so I only found out that I had viral myocarditis, a complication from COVID, when I was at the ICU after my cardiac arrest. Mm. So you were in your house with your husband when it happened. So what do you remember about that moment? So I lost about the week leading up and then the week after just due to oxygen loss. Um, so that's pretty typical for memory loss. My husband tells me that he was right across the hall and um, heard me cry out and he came over. Um, I was having convulsions and I was turning blue, my lips were turning blue. So he knew I wasn't breathing, called 911, started CPR, and he continued to do those um, chest compressions until help arrived about four minutes later. So um, then that was the, the 24 minute period they were working to resuscitate me using all manner of, of advanced life-saving techniques, you know, AED and continuing the chest compressions um, in between each shock. Wow, that's a lot of work and especially traumatic to do to a loved one, I can't imagine. Um, <laughs> bravo to your husband, though, for taking that action. Once you were home from the hospital, what did your life feel and look like? Yeah, it was completely different. So I went from being someone who was hiking easily 10 miles on a weekend um, to not being able to walk a block. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm still in heart failure. Um, I do have um, a lot better heart function than I did when I left the hospital, but um, it's it's not like it was. Um, so I had to do a lot of uh, solo research into you know what all this meant and, and how to get help. Um, doctors were kind of guarded. I did eventually find some support groups, mm. such as uh, through Sudden Cardiac Arrest Foundation and other survivors were really helpful. But I also took a break from work as of last October. Um, it's just proving to be too much. So I'm just really focused on, you know, rearranging my priorities, learning how to live this new life in a new body with just totally different parameters. Good for you, good well, for you. Well done, and you know, uh, most people, whether they admit it or not, have a healthy fear of death and what's waiting for us. Has this experience changed how you feel about death? It has. Um, I actually am not afraid of death at this time. Um, it was an overwhelmingly um, peaceful sense that, that I had of the, of the time away. Um, whenever I go into the room in my house where it happened, I feel really calm and safe, wow. um, which is interesting. Even though I don't remember you know, angels or uh, my life flashing before my eyes or seeing dead relatives or any of the things people ask me about, um, I do just have a really pervasive sense that it was friendly. Oh, wow. I know. Uh, I'm always fascinated by yeah. those near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wrote a book about your sudden cardiac arrest. Was writing about the experience therapeutic for you? Tell us about that. Yeah, um, yeah. And everyone always asks, like, how did you publish this, you know, within a year? And, and really, I started the book five years prior. Um, but the cardiac arrest just propelled me forward. I felt like, you know, life is so uncertain. I was just sitting at my desk one day working and you know, woke up days later in an ICU. So um, wow. I think with that in mind, I just, I really wanted to tell the story and obviously it had a different ending um, because of the cardiac arrest. So um, it was important to me that it be sort of real and raw um, and contemporaneous, you know, versus waiting years and letting hindsight sort of soften um, what happened. So um, I, I got it done. It was just my, my top priority in the early days of recovery. Wow, talk about resiliency, yeah. right? Yeah. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. DBL Nation, you can get a copy of Lauren's book, Independence Avenue, available now. You can also subscribe to Lauren's newsletter about her recovery by visiting her website. Thank you again, Lauren. We'll be right back. Thank, thank you. you.